Awesome. So welcome to the October 8th Data Science Working Group meeting for Chaos. This meeting is under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so please be kind to each other. We have a few things on the agenda. We also have uh, loads of space for other people to add agenda items. So if there's anything you'd like to chat about, um, please please go ahead and, and add it add it to the agenda. Um, I see I see Callie is just joining, so awesome. I'll drop the minutes in again. So the um, question of the day is, what's your favorite way to spend a rainy day? Which um, we've had we've had quite a few of those uh, here recently. So so that's what inspired my my choice of question. So we'll go ahead and and get started. Um, so the first thing on the agenda. Um, is just just a quick uh, open source summit retrospective. So I know a few of us were at the open source summit. So I thought it would be be good maybe just to spend a few minutes and and chat about what we thought about it. Um, anything interesting that uh, we saw there, heard there, uh, presented there. So uh, there were there were actually quite a few chaos and data talks in, in general. So that was that was really good to see. Um, Callie and I did the the data tsunami talk and that seemed to go that seemed to go pretty well. People seemed to like it. They asked questions um, afterwards. There was lots of nodding in the room and the room was pretty full, uh, even though it was close to the end of the day. So I thought that went really uh, really well. I don't know Callie if you want to add anything to that. No, I don't, I think you covered it. Cool. And then there were some other panels. There was a panel about, um, let's see, I, I was on a panel that wasn't chaos related. It was more about careers and, and open source, which is a panel that I've been doing with uh, Allison Rando and um, Ildiko Vanesca from uh, the, not Open Search Foundation anymore, it's the Open Infrastructure Foundation, um, along with we kind of alternate. Nithya does some of them, Nithya Ruff, and Ray Paik does does some of the others. So it's it's one we've been trotting around at conferences, and pe people seem to like it. It's you know it's just a way for us to give people tips for how to build a career in this open source thing that some of us have been doing for a very long time. We also Sean and I were on a panel um, that was about kind of academic and university. Um, open source, which um, I also thought went pretty well. People seem to like it. There seemed to be a good a good crowd in the room. I don't know, Sean, if you want to say anything about that. Yeah, I, th <clears throat> I, mean, I thought it was a good discussion. I think the folks who were there that are not um, open source scientific or academic folks were interested in how that works. So yeah, I thought it was a good panel. I thought we had some really good questions. How about anything else from the Open Source Summit that you enjoyed? Conversations, presentations? I didn't get to see much of it other than those panels. <laughs> there, there were some travel difficulties uh, getting yeah. in Indiana because of the flooding yeah. um, that affected Sean's travel. Um, yeah, there there were a few things that were that I found interesting there. Um, I was I was really happy to see Open Search moving from Amazon and into the Linux Foundation. So that that I thought was a really uh, a really positive announcement. So that was that was something that I I had been I I'd been asking them to do that since they first forked um, Elasticsearch, and so it was nice to finally finally see them uh, make that decision. Um, and there were also, there were loads of, of talks about, um, things like, like funding open source, which I think is becoming increasingly, increasingly important. And there were quite a few conversations that, uh, were had about that. I, I also spent some time talking to Bob Killen about, um, demonstrating the value of the work that we do in open source, which is something that I know a lot of OSPOs in particular struggle with. And so he and I are actually starting a practitioner guide um, focused on demonstrating value. So we, uh, I just 
this kicked off the, the doc today. It has almost nothing in it yet, but, but we're going to collaborate on it. And there's an issue in the data science working group repository for it. If you want to link to that, link to that doc to contribute or just have a, have a look at what we're doing. Um, that was another thing that, that came out of it. I don't know, Allie, if you had anything else from the summit. Um, no, it, it feels a little far. I'm trying to bring myself back to that. Um, I felt like it was well attended. Talks were well attended a lot more than some of the more recent open source summits. Um, yeah, that was the biggest thing that I noticed. Cool. Any anything else on that topic before we move to the next one? Um, I think Greg, you had some auger questions for Sean. Start with that. Uh, it's, uh, it was. Um, I mean, I could take this to Slack quite easily, but since you're here, right? Um, so I was. I set up an auger instance of my own this week just to play around with it a bit more than I have had time to in the past. And then one thing really jumped out at me is that as a as a brand new install. As a pile of repos, it starts off indexing straight away, like cat stall and so on. And I don't see anything in the documentation about how to delete repositories from the indexer. Um, it's not it's not covered for the CLI. It's not it's not possible in the UI. I, I don't think I should just go and delete them from the repos table. It feels like there will be other views that may reference that. What's the right way to stop indexing a repo? Uh, we haven't really accounted for that use case at all. Um, okay. There is a there is oh, a delete open an issue. Problem solved. <laughs> yeah, open an issue. Yeah, there is a there is a delete button, but I don't. It does not work. I didn't even see that. I was looking at okay. the UI and I didn't even see that. Um, it's it's there's two parts to it because part, once you have an account, all of the default repos that you that you know obviously Augur is one of them um, disappear. They're not in my group. They don't show up under my profile. They don't show up anywhere, right? Other than in like the general kind of stats on what's been indexed. So I've got yeah. my repos that I'm indexing. And I can mess with those. So obviously I can't delete those either. In fact, I added one that's complete typo and it keeps trying to hit it and then 404. And... <laughs> uh, but but the, really my use case is that. I only have one API key. I don't want to spend it on repos that I'm actually interested in, right? Um, so, uh, so that's that's kind of my. Uh, not that I'm saying Augur isn't interesting, clearly, but you know. <laughs> uh, but I, I need to go and index certain repos that are of, of value uh, to the work I'm doing, right? So, yeah, uh, being able to set that up properly and then clean it up over time because my list is going to change um, over time. So, I'll, I'll. But that's fine. If that's if that's how it is, I will go and open an issue and we'll talk about it. I just wondered if I was missing something, that's all. Um, other than that, it was pretty straightforward to get running on my my uh, Docker host here in the house. So, decent docs, well done. Awesome. We must have made some good improvements to the, the docs and the Docker container, because um, we, we, often, we often don't get, well, that was easy and I got it all set up. That isn't that might. isn't the response that we were getting a year ago. I might be special. <laughs> <laughs> I run a lot of containers here in the house, right? I think my main server under the stairs is currently running about fifty containers at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I like self-hosting things, right? I'm used to it. it. I mean, I'm not saying I ran the Docker Compose and it worked, right? I went and tweaked it a bit, but um, but that's at least partly because I'm running like traffic and let's encrypt and all the rest of it. So I want to put a certificate on that and yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all the usual things that go with that. Um, I'm a sysadmin by background, right? I like messing with things. But within the limits of what I expect to hack around in somebody's Docker Compose, it worked fine. I, mean, I think the longest thing was getting getting the images to build because they're not hosted, right? The, the, both the front end and the RabbitMQ image are both custom, so you have to build those. Uh, so, yeah, that took, a, that took a beat just to figure out where I was going wrong with that. I was being stupid, basically, so that's fine. That's my fault. Um, once they were built, it's fine works it's indexing stuff i'm told it to index ansible ansible uh which is obviously immense it's 12 year old repo that once had like fifty thousand pull requests in it and so on so it's been running for three days and it's still going because it's only got my key to work with <laughs> and it hasn't got to the commits yet it's still pulling all the comments off all the issues and the pull requests but you know you got to put it to its paces right it should be it should be getting commits fairly quickly so if it's not getting commits uh, yet let me check my logs. I, I can I can probably screen share if you want, but <laughs> um, 
Uh, what did I do with it? I've left it around somewhere. Oh, here it is. Um, let me have a look. When did I set this up? Saturday? Yeah, I've got nothing on the... So so the collection status page at the end of the UI, uh, at the end of the, the list of things in the navigation. Oh. Um, That's completely empty. I haven't looked in the tables yet, so it might well be that it has yeah, got it. Um, yeah, I should probably but, remove the collection status page. I'm not sure how... I mean... It's well, useful it for me to get a quick overview of like where things are at. I don't think there's, I don't think it's an inherently bad idea. <laughs> um, no, no, I don't think it's a bad idea either. I just I, uh, either that not seeing or, the commits there, then I just wonder perhaps the materialized yeah. views are not updated yet. But I okay. expect if you look in the, I expect if you let look in the commits table, you'll see let everything. Me have a look, let me have a look. SSH to server sudo. Uh, where do I want to go? I want to go to the database. PSQL minus U auger. Yeah, so um, remind myself how to set the schema. Yeah, that's going to annoy me now. Was that set? What's the schema command in PSQL? Always gets me. Oh, um, it's, set, it's, like a, it's something context, I believe. It's yeah, it's something like that. Uh, I don't. Every time I have to look this up, every single time you think it would stick by now. <laughs> but I'll, I'll have a look in a sec. I don't want to. I don't want to like take up. The yeah, with, with I'm happy to jump on a separate Zoom call with you as well, Greg. Yeah, at some point. I'm literally. I'm going off on PTO tomorrow, so uh, this is not oh. uh, my problem right now. <laughs> if for you. If, uh, assuming it's doing its job, I'm going to give it a pile of about. 30, 40 repos, and then go on holiday. Uh, so <laughs> uh, that'll be that'll be fine. Uh, so I don't have um, any particular. Oh, set search path. There it is. That's the one I'm looking for. All right. Well, if anyone else has got other agenda items, I will stop taking up your airtime because that's uh, that's not a good use of uh, of where we want to be here. Okay, we can we can talk about some project updates. I don't know, Elizabeth, if there's been any updates on event location inclusivity. I think maybe you were gonna take that into the DEI working group. Yes, we were, and we have not done that yet. So um, we can put it on the agenda for this week. I wasn't sure if, um, I know Sophia and Chan have been both traveling as well. So <clears throat> we'll put it on the agenda for this week. Okay. Whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, Callie, did you have anything you wanted to talk about on Project uh, Exodus or Seismic Shifts, I think was what we talked um, about. No, not this week. <laughs> Fair enough, no worries. Um, I do, I do have some updates. Maybe I'll just share my screen. I do have some updates on the um, forking licensing uh, project. So, so I've done I've done a few a few things, and I don't I don't remember what status it was in the last time we we talked about it in this meeting, but um, I have collected and analyzed the data for all six of these repositories, which you can find in the in the notebooks. Um, and we've created a uh, kind of a work in progress draft of what will eventually turn into a research report. So, um, so that can be found in, in Google Doc and anyone's welcome to contribute. Um, you don't even necessarily need to be doing data science-y things or analyzing the data about the forks and licensing because there's going to be whole sections about like like the context, so like the history, how how we got to this um, situation we're in, where they've done this wave of relicensing and and forks, um, you know, along with along with some some metrics stuff that has to be done. So you can have a look at the the report there. Um, and there are some things that are uh, that we can use some help with. So like I said, you know, writing some of these introduction and context sections of the report. Um, and also selecting project health metrics. So Georg did some really good work on that. We still need to back some of that up with um, with research and then start collecting some of that data for these projects and look at um, you know how things how things look based on 
uh, kind of key time periods. So, you know, the time leading up to a relicense, after a relicense, um, you know, after, after a fork. And then I am right now in the process of validating the data for these six projects. So talking to people who are actually involved in these projects. So I've already talked to uh, James Humphreys from uh, Space Lift, and he's um, been involved in Open Tofu since the beginning. So I got some good feedback from him. Um, the, the data looks pretty good. He helped me fill in a few, a few gaps, which was, which was really helpful. I also recently presented this data um, in an Open UK research meeting. So there's a video from that. My bit starts at about 40, 41 um, minutes into the video, but James Governor talked for the first bit and that part of the talk was really interesting. So um, if you're interested in this topic, I would encourage you to have a look at the at the video. It is about an hour and 20 minutes um, all told, but uh, it was it was kind of an interesting interesting discussion. So I included the um, the links to that here. And I'm hoping to get more people involved in this. I'm gonna mention it at the community meeting um, in uh, 40 minutes. So hopefully get get some more people involved in in some of this, some of this research so that it's not just just uh, you know, me doing stuff or us doing stuff. We can get a few more, a few more people involved. Any questions? about the forks and relicensing. Oh, one more thing. So Stephen Wally and I are doing a talk at LF Member Summit to talk about this data. So he's gonna talk about kind of the history and the context, how we how we got to where we are. And I'm gonna talk about the, the data. Cause this is something, I don't know if you know Stephen Wally, he works at Microsoft. Um, he's also been an open source um, for forever. And uh, he's written a couple of uh, blog posts about uh, about relicensing and forks. And it's something that we've been, we've been, the two of us have been chatting a lot about over the past, I don't know, year or two. So it'll be interesting to present it at Member Summit as well. Any questions on this? Oh, the only other thing that I did too, uh, the, the, there's a script that gathers all of this commit data. And so I've moved that from my own personal repository into, um, into the data science working group repository in case anybody wants to collect data on other, other projects. So this basically takes um, uh, an access token the URL for a GitHub repository, a begin date and end date, and gathers all the, all the commits and stores the commits in one pickle file and then aggregates them by person in another another pickle file so that you can just pull those pickle files into something like Jupyter notebooks or you know a python script or something and and look at the look at the data and play around with it which is which is what you see in the um, in the notebooks for example so you basically you basically read in the files and then do a bunch of stuff uh, but but that's all in the all in the notebooks. Any other any questions? Oh, uh, very quickly. Um, yeah. You might have said this, but I I will admit I tuned out briefly because somebody bothered me. Um, I wary of promising things that I may not have time for, given I'm already working doing some stuff for Fedora and the Matrix community as well. But I'm super interested in this. What would be the place to start? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would I would say that um, if you have a look at the the Google Doc, there, um, like I said, there's there's some bits that need to be need to be written, um, but there's also um, uh, project health measurements. So mm, we can but, start yeah. gathering some of these. Um, and my my hope is to to gather a lot of this data using like Augur and Eight Knot or um, and or Grimoire Lab, and so starting to look at these look at some of these metrics based on based on the time periods that are relevant for um, for the various projects, which you can find mostly in the notebook files because I generally try to put the key dates at the top, so like it was forked. Um, yeah. Foundation. So we've got some some key dates, um, and so I would say you know looking at some of that data 
would be would be really useful. I like causal analysis. Let's go play with that for a bit. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that looks like that looks like timeline data to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, that that would be great. I, especially, I am know. not making any promises given the fact oh. I'm about to go on holiday for a week. But uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to put it on my to-do list, and if if I get to it, great. But I do not. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, it, but it is really interesting. I think it is a really interesting thing. I would love to help out if I can. So. Yeah, I mean, I I find this fascinating. This is this is kind of why this project started. Was that uh, I just found it. I just I just find it really really interesting. Um, you know, partly because what what I find so fascinating about this is it's it's so different from how I perceived forks. You know, ten years ago, right? Because it was it was a lot of the community taking the code in another direction. So Sun gets acquired by mm. Oracle. Um, you know, Monty takes the My MySQL, creates uh, MariaDB, the Libra Office, the Document Foundation folks um, who were Libra Office contributors, they all kind of left open office and went and started this other thing. And so that was that was kind of the dynamic was something bad happens and the community revolts and forks the project. And these relicensing forks, a lot of them are very different because if you look at Elasticsearch, um, they don't have an outside contributor community. So the, the impact was on the users of Elasticsearch. And Amazon is one of the big users of Elasticsearch, um, took it and forked it. And they didn't have contributors from Elastic working on it. Um, and then the same thing with, if you look at Terraform and OpenTofu, the open tofu folks, none of them contributed to Terraform before they forked it and created open tofu. It was all new contributions. Now the Redis Falky example is different because it is one of those, um, you know, we, we the community um, don't agree with this relicense and we're gonna take it into our own thing. So it, it's just, I just find this really it's just absolutely fascinating. You're making me think of an old visualization I saw many, many years ago. Um, it was actually when Red Hat was bought by IBM and Avalia went and did a whole pile of research on the various DevOps tools because they were talking about Ansible in this article. But one of the things they did was was to demonstrate like the keeping knowledge within the community, which is kind of what you're, you're, you're talking a bit about there, about how if you keep your project founders and original contributors, then that, that, um, that breadth of knowledge and history and lore of how things are the way they are and why they are the way they are is kept within the project, right? And if, and I wonder whether that's an interesting thing to look at with forks. Like where do the original contributors go? Which side of the line do they fall mm -hmm. on? Could be quite an interesting thing at some point as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I found the link here. I'll put it in chat. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. still, it's still it, there's, there's some nice, are they, is this the one that's got it in? Uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. I'll uh, I'll put it in chat. It is the right one. If I can, to my browsers. There we go. Um, yeah, it's uh, some really good uh, some good stuff in there. Cool. Okay. Well, um, I will go and have a, a read to it. And now I've got my own organs to play with as well. It might help a bit. Awesome. But I've got you got the pickle files as well, so I can look at those. That's cool. Thank you. Cool. We have we have three chaos communities joined. Um, okay, one of them just dropped back off. I was just curious who the other one was. Um, this is Sean. I just changed computers. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, all right, so Sophia, we have reached the end of the agenda. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Did you have any agenda items? <laughs> I don't even know. It's been a scattered day. Um, <laughs> Did I did I bring up pearls with this group? Because I've been kind of really obsessed with them. With with what? Uh package URL, a pearl. Oh. I don't think Let me so. put, put it in the chat. I like asked this question a while ago in either a data science or a community call around how people were consistently linking records across package distributors, GitHub repositories, and other types of center sources of truth or distributions around open source software and packages. And it turns out there is an effort to try to standardize package naming um, so that you can consistently reference them across all these various different databases. I think that would extend to things like CSVs and reporting um, against them. Um, I don't actually know 
who's adopting it um, or if it's even being adopted outside of a couple of named solutions. But I did want to share that I've been following it with great interest because I think that would be great if we had a consistent way to link things because as someone who's done a, a lot of semi-imperfect joins between data sets, it would be really helpful to have a consistent identifier. Um, so I just wanted to share that I was following this effort and was curious to hear if other folks had seen similar things or just to share something I found. Yeah, that's really interesting because that's that's been a big that's been a big challenge, right? I mean, we've talked about this before, I think probably in, in this meeting, is that you know, we we tend um within a lot of the, the chaos tools, we tend to focus on the repository data, um, which leaves out the whole component of like usage and the things that depend on it. And there's this whole set of other things that happens in these these package, um, uh, you know, basically where the packages are. And so having something consistent that we could we can use across across packages and be able to match match thing uh, package providers and be able to match things up would be would be super helpful. I ran into this with a with another project that we were doing some research um, and and this was something that that they were they were talking a lot about was you know having to the challenge of matching the the repositories to where these where these things existed in various package managers depending on the the type of project. I don't know, Sean, if you've had any any experience with this. With the various package managers? Uh with this spec, this package URL spec. I haven't. I haven't even run across it yet. I'm learning right here along with the rest of you. It has a pretty compelling list of adopters. If you scroll down. Um, users and adopters. So scan code, SPDX, Cyclone, OWASP. I don't know what context they're using it in, um, but I mean, I recognize a number of those things. So it seems like it's gaining some traction, but I haven't actually like come across it in the wild yet. Or maybe I well, haven't. I haven't noticed. This this looks like a sort of a um, perhaps a more general software implementation of what Ecosystems is doing. Do you know Ecosystems? It's ecosystem.ms. It's from the guy who did libraries.io and then branched off into his own thing. Can you link that in the chat? Yeah, yeah. I'll put a link in. You'll once I put the link in, you'll know exactly how to link to it, but. It is a bit of a, I think, a hard to follow URL name. Mm, I see it now. I'll drop that in the notes. I'm just going to test this, make sure I give you the right URL, but I'm almost, yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot on the page, but if you follow it down, basically all those, our projects are implementations of software in their GitHub repository, like you showed for this other thing um, that provide, it provides an API to get this data from the stuff that they check. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I suppose, because it's just an API, I always like to implement things myself than to trust someone else's API where I can, but. Any well, other? Any other thoughts on this? Okay. Any other last minute agenda agenda items? Anything else we want to talk about? Okay. Cool. Well, thank you everybody for joining and uh, Greg, enjoy your time off. And Elizabeth, I hope you feel better. And I will just give you almost 20 minutes back. Thanks folks, see you in a bit. All right, thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye everybody. Bye.